What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Bite Size Security. My name is Jimmy and I'm bringing you another video. I know you must be thinking, what's going on? Why so many videos? But like I said in the last one, I'm in the last preparation for the OSCP. And so I'm just running through a few boxes, some easier, some harder, some shorter, some longer just to get warmed up, prepare, uh, really hammer down my methodology and just get in the mindset of just hacking a lot. So I thought might as well record a couple more videos and have some content to upload. So here goes. Um, now, today we are covering uh, another one of the Proving Grounds boxes and we're doing Exfiltrate. And the reason why we're not doing Help Desk is because I cannot seem to start it. I know Offsec has been having a few problems with loading some of their machines. So we're just gonna skip Help Desk, do Exfiltrate it, and then do Access. And yeah, let's just get straight into it. I think this might also be a quicker one. I know Twiggy was very short. You might enjoy that. So let's just get into it. As usual, I've got everything running. I've got the VPN running. Let me just ping. That's working. And I've done a few changes here and there. You will notice right away what I mean by that. So let's just start. We'll do first, we'll go into the actual file. We haven't created it yet. So let's do that. Dash P exfiltrate it. And you will see we've now created the folder. Let's open it with sublime text like so. That's perfect. And then let's also go inside enum external and just be there. And then here as well, we've got everything ready. And I've added a few notes already because I know there's always at least two or three and I've done the the port 81 so I just don't have to do it all the time and let me just copy the IP here and run recon while I talk and also run scan another thing I want to do sorry that was wrong oh this was not good because now I'm going to have to wait yeah that's that's fine another thing I want to do because I was doing another box, which I will not film for now. And I noticed when there's a redirection, let me actually cancel this. When there's a redirection on a, on, let's say there's a host name that I haven't got into my host file and there's a redirection, I lose a lot of time finding out during enumeration of my recon scan. And so I thought what I should do is before I run recon, let me just go back. Let me remove RF with sudo the results that it is created. And before I run anything, let me just curl just so that I can see if it redirects or not. So let's do that here. Huh? Yeah, I think that's what I mean. If it doesn't redirect, there you go. Here I'll see verbose and 302. See, that's exactly what I mean. From now on, I will always run a quick curl W and then add to my host file. So I'll do this here. I'll explain it here. So no, let's not do that here. We'll say Let's, how should we do this? We'll say in curl and then like that, redirection. For now, I'll, I'll, I'll perfect this for next time, but just so we know that there is some sort of redirection and we'll then call that Exfiltrated, what was it? Dot offsec. Uh, where does it say? Where does it say? Exfiltrated dot offsec. Yeah, I did see that correctly. Okay, so and now we can run recon on that. Just oh no, actually, not on that still. Um, 
let's remove that again and run recon on offsec dot uh, sorry exfiltrated dot offsec like that I just hope that this won't make my computer go super slow should be fine <clears throat> And now let's run a scan on the IP and call that rust scan dot text like so. It is, it is somewhat making my computer slower when I run this. I don't really know why, but that's okay. Let me close this. Enum. External here, we no longer have to clean that because of the genius in my comment section. Uh, section. So we can paste that there. We've got the quick scan that's already done. We've got UDP that's still going and full that's still going. Then we've got HTTP. The AMAP is already there. SSH. And then we've got, that's it for now. <clears throat> uh, so let's go here and then do SSH with it on our IP, call that SSH audit like this. That will be done in just a second. Take that in syntax ANSI. I want to make a bind to quickly change the um, the syntax to ANSI. That's the next thing I'm going to be working on in the next couple of um, minutes or whatever after this video. SSH audit, like so. And yeah. if someone knows how to do a binding with this, let me know. But then let's go to port 80. All right. So we've got Nikto. And we've got Anma. We've got what web? Ooh, I forgot what web in the template. What web? Uh, like this. And let's just take that and go into other template here, there, and add what web. That's the template where it copies from. You just got a sneak peek. <clears throat> uh, then let's go back to Nikto, like so. The screenshots. Wait, let's run Burp Suite. And have Firefox routing everything through Burp. Let's take the IP one more time and let's go on it once Burp Suite is running. Then let's take a full screenshot of this page. And paste that here. Oh, okay, I know what I just did. I was still in the template and I added stuff in the templates. I do not want that. There you go. Let me hide that again here. 
Nick though is good. The screenshots is okay. Nick though, what web is okay. Then let's continue with GoBuster. We've got quite a few things here. Cron. Cron.php, interesting. Change law capture. Interesting. We'll look at that in a second. So what web we've got? Screenshot we've got uh, curl curl robots. We don't have curl robots dot text. The connection is unstable. Yeah, offset is having a few issues. Um, <clears throat> And that's it for the enumeration, I believe. Uh, yeah, that was super quick. Okay, let's start looking at this here. We've got here, powered by Subrion CMS. So that's a bit more information. Let's call that enumeration. That's the CMS. Um, let's fingerprint this a bit. The greatest place to kickstart anything. Amazing. It's just a landing page for a content management service. Members. We've got a username. Testing. Testing tester. Apply. Apply. Doesn't really do anything. Let's go to blog. We've got a login panel. Okay. Let's take a screenshot of that. Uh, we have a login panel. We'll try default credentials there in a second. What else do we have here? Backup, cron, TMP. Let's go to panel. Panel might look interesting. We'll go to panel and we will go to backup. Those look kind of good. Backup is nothing. Panel. Oh, we've got another login panel. Okay. And this one gives us more information. We have a second login panel along with a information disclosure vulnerability. Well, it's not really, yeah, it is a vulnerability because it gives us the exact version of the CMS and you guys know what that means. That means we will take that right away and go Google it. And I am pretty sure we're going to find an exploit. Let's see, exploit. Nope. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that here. Let me get used to doing that here. So, I like going on this website, VK9, because they usually explain the vulnerability before giving me a proof of concept. But then you've got an exploit here right away and then arbitrary file upload. So, the vulnerability is the following. Indeed, this version is vulnerable to arbitrary file upload vulnerability. Vulnerability. There you go. Like so. 
uh, which one exactly? CVE. Like that. So we can delete these three, these four, five, and pretty much go to exploit. Okay, what do we have? The CMS could allow a remote uh, authenticated attacker. Oh yeah, we need to log in. So let's try. So I've said in the last video that login panels with proving grounds is one of two things. They either test you on finding the credentials somewhere or it's admin admin. At least with every box I've done of offensive security proving grounds, it's been like that. Rarely do I have to, and there you go. Rarely do I have to brute force anything. So we have access to this panel. Uh, so wait, let me just do this here. The admin, admin credentials are valid too. So this one was, wait, was that correct? The other one was panel, right? So this was on the normal login panel. But I wanted to type them into the panel one. Oh, okay, yeah. So that was that was it. Okay, so they are valid. Admin admin is valid across both login panels. So like that. That's the interesting one. And here it says exactly that. So once you are in, you can curl this just to, oh, this is an actual walkthrough. I don't want to do, I don't want to check this actual walkthrough. So let me find a proof of concept for just this vulnerability there. File upload RCE. Okay, so VK9 is an actual walkthrough. It wasn't always, but here in this, in this case it is because it said offsec. So I don't wanna read that, I don't wanna make it too easy. But essentially here it's the same thing. I get a, a script and if it's exploit DB, then I'll I'll go with it. So this is Python. So let me just download that into workspace, proving grounds, boxes, exfiltrated, exploits. And let's go check it out. Of course, we could fingerprint everything here. Let's go to system. System, do we have some kind of command? Console, content. Oh, here's the uploads. So I'm guessing this here is vulnerable, right? And if we upload something to here, we can probably go to it and and exploit it. What kind of files? PHP? Yes, probably PHP because, where was it? Go Buster. We had cron.php and ASP. 
Okay, I guess whatever file you want, you can upload. Okay, this is rather easy. Let's just exploit the script because we've done file uploads before and let's just do the script for now because that's okay. Exploit Python 49-H. Okay. So let's bring this down. Let's collapse this, collapse this, and let's go to exploit. Okay. Uh, we have found an exploit on exploit db. Exploit db. Let's try and test it out. Okay, so what do we need? The URL HTTP slash 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 our IP slash panel L user admin P admin Will that work? Success Maybe with exploit, sometimes it's a bit finicky with panel with with the last directory if you have to put a slash or not. So let's try this one as well. This seems to be different. Yeah, that seems to work. Damn, nice. That was probably the quickest initial foothold we have ever gotten but amazing let's do who am i www data okay so what next okay so given that i'm running through this like in like I am in the offsec exam, although this is much easier, and I'm really preparing for it. In the exam, I'm not gonna waste too much time with manual enumeration. I know how it works, so I will I will use linpiece. So this is what I'll do now too. I'll go to Privesk. Uh, let's use And then I go to Privesk, I'll go to Privesk here and locate Limp Piece, copy it, copy Limp Piece to here, start a web server, here I'll go to TMP. Uh, I first want a better shell. Uh, let's go down, let's open one here, listen. On port 1234. Let's go to ref shell. Let's take our favorite shortest by Python, our IP, like so. Uh, what shell is this? This is this is um, SH echo shell. Yeah, I believe this is SH, so I'll stick to SH. Like that. Oh. Like this. Here I'll listen on port 1234. Like that. <clears throat> So this was the window of exploitation and this will be 
the window of privilege escalation. Um, let's do Python 3 dash C imports PTY PTY dot spawn bin sh like so and then let's do backgrounds sttty raw dash echo foregrounds and then exports term equals x term like so and then let's post the server here A server. Let's close that. And here let's go to TMP and then let's get lint piece over. 192 and then a thousand lint piece dot sh. So, and then give Linpiece some permissions. And then run Linpiece. Like that. And close the server and wait. And while that's running, we'll take some notes. Transfer. Interesting. Let me just look. Nothing uh, interesting. Yeah, let's just wait. Oh, it's finished. Okay. Okay, let's go through that. So, pseudo version, that's okay. Operating system, also okay. This is not okay, the kernel, but... Okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, let's do this. Outdated kernel version. Uh, let's do make. Okay. Even if it's an outdated kernel version, we can't really do anything about that. To exploit kernel versions, we often have to compile them. And we do that using make or GCC. Let me check if we have GCC. We, we don't have GCC. So let's not go with the kernel exploit for now what else do we have let's go all the way up uh probable yeah these are always kind of there and it's raining a lot outside uh, these are the processes
nothing there. Chrome jobs. We have an interesting cron job here. We have an interesting cron job. The image exif on OPT. Let's remember that. What else? What else? What else? What else? Move the groups. LXD. Are we part of LXD? There's also some privesks we can do with that. We've got sudo. but I want to check the version of sudo here's the information about the web server that was running then suid bit <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so. We have an interesting binary that has its SUID bit set. PK exec. This would be a quick win. I will show you after why. But first, let's look into that cron job. This. Okay. Let's go into OPT and look at this image exif.sh. <laughs> Meta file open, open SSL. It takes a file processing exif metadata. It looks for a JPEG, an image JPEG. And while it reads that file name, it also looks at... Okay, so EXIF tool is a tool with which you look at the metadata of any image, right? And so I'm guessing it will take an image from var www.html so Brian uploads folder and it will inspect its metadata. And I will do that as root. Um, okay. So. Exif tool. Privesk. And here we would say set UID privesk. We'll first do the exif tool privesk. And then after that, I'll show you the PK exec. So it will take an image, look at its metadata and do something with it. And it will do that as root. So maybe we can in, in, uh, put a vulnerable image there. Let's go online and see if we find anything with this. OK. 
Okay. So google.com. And yeah, okay, Google knows this already. And there's an arbitrary code execution exploit here. Okay, so I'm guessing, okay, this is the script. Is there a manual way to do this? Yeah, okay, I guess this is the intended way. It's, it is exploit DB and exploit DB is managed by offsec, I believe. Let me just open that. Is there any blog? Oh, okay. So here is. Yeah. Okay. It's exactly. Okay. I'll put. I'll put the manual way in the description. I guess. No. Let's just. Let's just do that. Is this a walkthrough or is this the actual POC? Okay, so let's put this here. We have found a POC online on how to exploit this vulnerability. Let's walk through it manually. Okay, so I'll do this one manually because the other exploit I will show you in a second is very quick. So I'll do this manually and then I'll do the other one. So let's do that. The command prompt, I'll bring it over here. I'll open a pane down here and let's do this. Okay, so we'll, we'll touch exploits.sh, all right? We'll open that. Here, Privesk. Let's close this. Exploit.sh. Inside of exploit, we will put a reverse shell. Okay. This reverse shell will connect back on to our IP. but on port 1337 because we are leet, you know the drill. And let's save that. Then we'll also create a payload. And edit that one as well. Inside of the payload, we'll put this. And that will also connect back to us. I'll have to run a server. Yes, okay, I'll have to run a server. So that'll, that'll be on port 8000. Then, let me create a deja vu file with payload. So deja vu make, call it exploit deja vu. Deja vu, deja vu. Uh, and then, Take it from the file called payload. <laughs> I'm having fun, guys. Then we'll call payloads. No, we'll call exploits. We'll make it into a JPEG. Makes sense. And then we'll open a pane and host the server. And also listen on port 1337, which is where we'll get our root shell back. Uh, then here we'll go into var dub 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 HTMLs so soup 
Subray on. Uploads. Oh, I guess I could have done that right away from the... Yeah, whatever. And then we'll call back to our server, which is 192.168.45.1529. On port 8000, and we'll take our JPEG like so. And I'm guessing then we wait. We wait, <laughs> and that worked. Yeah, that was easy. Where am I? Root. That's number one. Okay, so that was easy. The POC, which by the way, the link is here. Worked exactly as described. Yeah, this one was rather easy. Now, what I wanted to show you is this SUID for PK, PK exec, which is, uh, where is it? There. Let's close this and let's close that. So this PK exec, when this is set, my favorite exploit works, which let's take it from uh, workspace, back the box, academy, and then privilege escalation, Linux. Point kit. Point kit to here. And then let's run the server. Let's go to TMP. W get HTTP. We've already done that. So let's do point kit. So, let's give it a couple of permissions and run it. So first, who am I? And then, point kit, who am I? Root. <laughs> I love this exploit so much. It's just insane. Basically, there's a vulnerability in the way PK exec, in PK exec, in the way it functions there's a whole explanation which i have here basically it's a vulnerability in poll kit formerly known as the policy kit which is a toolkit for managing system-wide privileges and yeah basically there is a vulnerability there i'm not going to go over that here but you can in the academy which i keep plugging shamelessly but anyway i've shown you two ways to root exfiltrated i hope you guys enjoyed it please subscribe we are almost at a thousand subscribers within two months great stuff guys thank you so much i appreciate it a lot this was a short one but fun uh yeah i mean what did we do we found credentials like the standard credentials onto our web server there was uh, vulnerable there was a information disclosure the version we found that Sir Brian had a vulnerable version we exploited it with a public exploit and then we exploited once porn kit and once this cron job that took images and did some magic with them and we kind of poisoned uh, an image file and got root through that <laughs> very much summarized but that's essentially the gist of what we did thank you guys for watching thank you guys for supporting my channel this is the final stretch before the oscp 
and wish me luck. There might be another video before the OSCP, but we'll, I can't promise anything for now. It's just hacking, hacking, hacking every day until I'm ready. Well, there's not much more I can do now, but yeah. And uh, hopefully see you on the other side. Yeah, this has been Jimmy with Biteside Security. Biteside Security. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm out. Peace.